Following the end of the Second World War in Europe, there were many different war crimes trials that took place, which brought concentration camp guards and staff in front of a judge. Many were sentenced to death for their crimes, which included murder, incredible shocking acts of violence, and causing the suffering inside of the camps. Many former guards such as Josef Kramer the Beast of Belsen and Irma Grazer the Hyena of Auschwitz were put to death for their brutality, but there were a number of former guards and members of staff who were sentenced to time in prison. Many of these prison sentences were rather short, considering the crimes of the former guards. One of these who was imprisoned was Ilse Forster, but what did she do inside of Bergen-Belsen? Join us today as we find out, and remember as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Ilse Forster was born on the 2nd of September 1922 in Silesia, and during the Second World War, she worked inside of a factory. But as the conflict was turning against the Germans, following the Normandy invasions and the Battle of Stalingrad, more soldiers were drafted to the front lines. Many concentration camp staff were sent to fight the Allies, and this left a shortage of workers inside of places such as Auschwitz and Bergen-Belsen. The Germans drafted scores of women into the concentration camp system, and Ilse Forster went into the SS, and was sent to a labour camp at langen Bilau. Whilst here, she was given a course of six weeks training as a guard, and then she went back to the factory at Grunberg, where she was working. But she then took over camp duties at a site close to the factory. She worked here until the end of January 1945, then accompanied the prisoners on a death march to Rüben, which took five days. Then she went with the prisoners towards Bergen-Belsen, where she arrived on the 17th of February 1945. After she reached the camp, Ilse Forster worked inside of the bathhouse, and then the kitchens in the men's compound, and she worked to make sure that all work was completed. Ilse also was placed in charge of ensuring that no prisoners stole from the kitchen. Bergen-Belsen at this time was in a state of depravity, as thousands of prisoners were dying each week from diseases, such as typhus, which were running riot through the camp. Also, there was a severe lack of food, and many prisoners were dying from malnourishment, and things became very desperate, especially when thousands of prisoners arrived at Belsen, and it became very overcrowded. Forster said how there were around 60 female prisoners, cooking for other prisoners, and when she arrived there, there were very few female guards. She claimed that she worked 20-hour days initially, and then worked 10-hour shifts a few weeks later. She stated that prisoners inside of the kitchens were given sufficient food, and claimed that the problem with food was that Belson was being supplied with hardly any, and none was being sent. She said that she did try to get more food for the prisoners, and did mention that they did get an additional supply, claiming that prisoners who worked in the kitchen could eat as much as they wanted, whilst others were starving. Many of Forster's crimes revolve around how she treated those prisoners who tried to take food from the kitchens. She admitted that she did beat prisoners with her hands, and also with a stick, but she said she never carried a rubber truncheon. Forster would go on to say, without her work violently attacking prisoners, then others would not have eaten. However, witnesses would testify about the violence of her attacks. One witness claimed that she would beat prisoners with a thick stick, and that some of them were beaten so badly that they were knocked out, and she continued to beat them whilst unconscious, with these being left on the floor. Forster denied this, but more allegations emerged. She was accused of dragging prisoners away from the kitchens into a side room, where she then administered terrifying beatings. Another allegation said that two or three times a day, women were being taken into the small office next to the kitchen, where Forster laid into them with a rubber truncheon, or a weapon. Shockingly, even other guards who worked at Belsen would testify about Ilse Forster's violent beatings. Hertha Elhart claimed that along with another guard, Forster would beat prisoners to an unreasonable extent. But she did not speak to her about this behaviour, even though Elhart did come to speak to her about how things were going inside of the kitchens. Forster would face allegations that she even admitted to her for Elhart that she was excited about the fact she caught some prisoners stealing sugar, and was proud of the fact she gave them a good beating. Another witness testified and identified Forster for being a murderer, and a woman who with her bare hands beat a young girl to death. Prisoners would continue to complain about Ilse Forster's violence inside the cookhouse, and she was also accused of carrying a rubber hose 
which she beat prisoners with. Further interrogation at her trial took place about her actions, and specifically about how violent she was towards others. Claims continued that Ilsa Forster was a murderer, and it was alleged that she had killed a Russian girl, after beating her to death. It was said that she also seemed proud of this, and she admitted she did beat this girl, but then was found out at trial that she did beat her so badly that she did not come into work the next day. It seems at her trial that Forster was being exposed for her lies, but the judges had a rather tough decision to make as to what to do with her, either sentence her to death or place her in prison. At the Belson trials, what led to many of the defendants' executions was if they had worked at other camps as well as Belson. Most of those who worked at Auschwitz and also Belson were executed, including Elizabeth Falkenrath and Irma Grazer. But what may have saved Ilsa Forster is the fact she came into the concentration camp system late in the conflict because of a shortage of staff. It's clear that she was a brutal guard and was as violent as other Alsarins such as Grazer or Maria Mandel, but she had not the chance to work at other camps such as Auschwitz, where there was mass-scale killing. There was a huge amount of death at Belsen, but the majority of prisoners in the final days were killed by the conditions and the diseases. Much of her sentence was given due to the issues in testimony of others. There was no real concrete proof of Elsa Forster's actions. If there was circumstantial proof and evidence of her killing prisoners, then she would have definitely been sentenced to death. It was clear she was violent and a brute, but the extent that she injured prisoners would not be established. With this, Ilsa Forster was sentenced to a period of 10 years imprisonment, alongside other guards such as Hertha Bofa, Irene Hashka and Anna Hempel. However, Forster would never spend the full 10 years in prison, as on the 21st of December 1951, she was released from her incarceration, after spending just around 6 years behind bars. Today it is not known what happened to Ilsa Forster after she was released, and there are no accounts as to what happened to her after this. It's not known whether she has died or whether she is still alive, but when she went into the concentration camp system, she was in her early 20s. This makes it more likely that she has passed away. Despite being imprisoned for her crimes, what saved her ultimately is the fact there was no concrete proof about if she did commit murder and kill female prisoners. It was certain though that either with a stick, a rubber truncheon or a weapon, that Ilsa Forster was a brutal SS guard who struck fear into the hearts of prisoners. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.